So at this point, it is time for, well, one secret recipe we have to make sure that you leave the show feeling not stressed, um, relaxed, and ready to start your day in a different way. You know, we've had a lot of news from national scene, from the local scene, lots of things going on. But we can't let you go, go on with your, day, with your day that way, which is why we're moving on straight to social media trends and divine on Waha. Our very own queen of great conversations is back with all the trends. Thank you for being with us, Divine. Good morning. You'll be with me now. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you make social media trends look like it's something that will calm the nerves, I just it, laugh. It because, will calm the nerves. Because there's a lot going on now. Mm. It's not every time you have juicy stories. Sometimes it's still the same sad but stories. But you know, we can make we can, a little bit of sauce, a little bit of human interest here and there. Right, just, okay. okay. Humans okay. doing things that are not, you know, politically related. All so right. Much. So I think what is trending when going to the world of x of course and what is trending on x is the nail fund um, list that was released mm. list of universities that have been given the nail fund loans and it was found that um, southeastern universities are not included and mm -hmm. it has got a lot of people talking um so far uh, the sum of 2.9 billion naira has been released mm -hmm. and a loan to 27,667 students and none of these included southeastern universities so a lot of people are talking was this intentional is this part of the whole marginalization thing we have a particular guy Maurice Moya I think he was the main person that started the whole gist and he he's saying that um uh, he's, he has had a brief meeting with them. And so people are saying, oh, oh, he said he had a brief meeting with the MD of Nail Fund. And he said that, uh, that there's no way that they would, you know, ignore a whole region entirely. It's probably because they, you know, the schools are not yet ready. They've not done all the verification that they are supposed to do for those students. But there are other people thinking, no, no, it's not so. It's, it's because it's Southeast. Mm. And so people are still asking questions like, did you people... Uh, the Southeast people, did they apply? Did they apply? You know, so these are various angles that have been explored so far. But we'll take a look at some of the comments before I get to hear your opinion on that. Let's have the comments. All right. So we have a comment there. A normal level to exclude Ndibo doesn't... Don't let it bother you. It doesn't change the fact that Igbos will stay ahead in all academic educational indices in Nigeria. Another comment says, did they apply? Very simple question. If your school and students don't apply, no loan for you. It's voluntary, not obligatory. When they built railway stations slash roads in other areas, did they include Ndibo? That answers your question here, that you are not regarded as a Nigerian. It's better you wake up now and fight for your freedom. And the last one here, rather long. The reason is not politically oriented like many will think. It's just that the loan was to be started with new academic sessions. Schools in the Southeast are still in their second semester. But then, this is Nigeria, and anything can happen. P.S. I applied to, I mean, UNN. You see, this, this is an angle I wanted to actually open up with because some people have actually sent screenshots of them applying. Their mm. actual screenshot of saying, okay, they applied and they are waiting for some kind of verification. So they actually did. Some students applied. Mm. That is what we're seeing. Though we cannot guarantee the authenticity of most of those screenshots, but it would appear on face value that some students actually did. So, yeah. you know, I, I know that the Nail Fund came out and said that it, regions don't determine the student loan disbursements. But at, even if it was one university, at least. At least. You just know? one. Just so, one. So, so they're saying that, because um, this guy, Maurice, that talked with the MD of Nail Fund, he's saying that... Uh, that the, the school itself is supposed to do some verification, mm. confirm that you are a student of the school, do some things, you know, before they can go ahead. And the question, the, the, the fact that he said they cannot just abandon a whole region also makes me think, how is it that in a whole region, no students or none of the schools were, you know, quick enough to mm -hmm. verify? That's also questionable. But are we, we still, because right now our correspondents are actually touring the various universities here in okay. the Southeast, and they're gathering facts. They're asking Asking, did you apply for this student loan? So you can rest assured that by tomorrow we're going to have we'll answers have from the schools here in the Southeast. But at the same time, Southeasterners on social media appear to be very confident and relaxed. They're saying, do we need this? I mean, we're fine. We're resilient people. We can do with or without your loan. So the attitude of Southeasterners now as shown on X and of, of other social media platforms is one of strength, 
one of resilience, one of not really caring. They're like, you know what, you don't need, we don't need your loan. That is what we're seeing right now. But I fear that this thing might be, if there's some sort of, um, if there's something behind that we're not seeing, this attitude might make them want to, you, you know, say things like Southeastern students mm. did not apply because they feel relaxed, because yeah. they feel, oh, they don't need it. And that's the narrative that is going on. That's why people are asking, did you people apply? She people said, you people are being marginalized, so you yeah. didn't apply. So I don't know, it's just somehow tricky. We'll, we'll watch and see how, how that plays out. We'll watch and see how that plays out. But yes, nobody will beg us to apply. But the truth is, it's like when you go to order fast food mm. and you know that you are entitled to a free drink. Mm. If you don't ask for the drink, they won't give you. And rest assured, the attendant is going to drink that cold bottle of any soft drink, right? I can't I advertise mean. for anybody here, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> you know, so Let's they will drink and then, and then okay. they'll have it. And you will go and say, you don't need it. So nobody's going to ask for that. But I think the schools have that responsibility to, mm. to apply. We may not think we need it, but the students need it. Need so it, it's important that the schools do the right thing. Okay, we're well, waiting to hear from the schools. And um, the other trend we have here is about a popular cross-dresser, transgender, whatever it is, he or she, hmm. Bob Risky, <laughs> who has been released from Kiri Kiri. And yeah, Curiosity made me ask, was interviewing him and was asking him a lot of things and he's saying he's not an ex-convict. A lot has been going on around him, but that video is about seven, eight minutes long. I don't know if we can take it. Can we? Yeah, I think we can have a few minutes of that. All right, let's have <laughs> the video then. Three months for Idris. To me, I see it as a vacation. It's like prison fits you. He fits me, Sha. Would you like to go again? How did you manage your mental and emotional well-being? Or did you just soap it all through? Hmm? I heard that the judge that sentenced you um, is a female. Yes. Will you say she sentenced you without the option of fine? Because she's jealous you won best dressed female. See. Be careful uh, what you say, so you're not gonna end up in prison again. <laughs> I'm not scared. Are you still friends with the person that sponsored your trip to KOK? There's no picture of you on this. Am I supposed to wear this? You didn't wear this in prison. Am I supposed to wear this? That's because you were not in prison. You were in one VIP place. You did not. Care of. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything now. That one is people's business. A lot of people were expecting you to come out looking like Gandalf. You understand? <laughs> How did you get someone to bring you shaving stick? I've done laser till I leave those hurts. Hair cannot grow. I'm not an ex convict because I can't be convicted for spirit of money. So I'm not an ex convict. I won't accept that's one. Okay, then you said what again? Ex or something again? Ex money prayer. Ex money prayer. No. Oh, goodness. That's what it's I mean, good looking out to Curiosity it Made Me Ask podcast. The interview was super action packed. It was super, it was just a revelation there, you know, asking the hard hitting questions. This guy is always, he's always doing expressionless, this. Expressionless, expressionless. You know, that was a great one from him. Okay. Uh, there. Yeah. So before we, uh, before I get your opinion on the whole, I'm not an ex convict, mm. let's talk about this other very important issue trending, which is the fact that he came online, but Brisky came online and he, he was thanking all the people that came through for him. Apparently, there's been a lot of celebrities that donated money mm. to him for what purpose we don't yet know but you know he was appreciating people that helped him and he he published a list of top celebrities the likes of tiwa savage the likes of don jazzy the likes of emiola jao tonto led victor Osimen, and a whole lot of people and it has gotten people talking why are you put donating money to him what are you put trying to promote the likes of very dark man came out and was bashing all the celebrities and said i've lost respect for all of you because there are lots of people suffering uh, lots of cities and um, villages without boreholes none of you are giving to to that cause a lot of uh, even the, the the people that came out that were released uh, the those people that protested for the mm -hmm. NSAS protests that were released recently nobody has contributed for them and a lot of people making impact in Nigeria and you are contributing for Bob Brisky yeah but now another angle to it is he's just an entertainer like them and even if he's uh, whatever he is he's, he's still a human being mm. so I don't know what you think about that here's what I think I think that um if you have gone to prison You've been convicted of a crime. You've spent time in prison. You are an ex-convict. This is not because of, you know, I'm just, this is, this is my view on it, my personal opinion. You served time. Mm. If you went to court and you were found to be innocent, then you can't be a, an ex-convict. But I think that uh, Bob Risky is coming from an emotional point of, 
I don't want to be called that. Is money spraying Narab? Is that a crime? I only sprayed money. That's what he's saying. Mm. But the fact is, and this is what my opinion is based on, he spent time in prison. Mm. And that does make him an, an ex-convict. Ex so it's based on those facts. So what he's saying, anybody that nobody that leaves prison won't be called an ex-convict. If mm, I go to prison, true. I would want oh, I'm an ex-convict. No, it's mm. not, it's not. It doesn't you know, make it right. It doesn't make it right. But then if you go to apply for a job and you see a form, you will still take that, yes, you yes, have. Yes, there's yes, a, there's yes, a spot that says, have you spent time in prison? You still say, yes, you have. So mm -hmm. deep down, you know what you are. You know what you've been through. But publicly, you don't want to be look seen. Good. He said yeah. it's a vacation. It's a vacation. <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm not an ex-convict, but spend time in prison makes you one. And if he goes to actually apply for something, he would still have to add, take that he has spent time in prison. Mm. So we know what we are, but we don't want to be referred to as that as because that. then it can come up as insulting. So I do understand where Bob Risky is coming from. But the fact is, he is Sorry, because bro. he spent time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you. You. Didn't, you didn't comment on the whole um, the the contributions made. The for contributions him. made. Um, I, I I don't. I I join people to wonder. I join very dark man to wonder why they contributed that much because there are people in need. This is someone you know. His bank account was made public. You know he has a lot of money. So it's it it still escapes me why they would contribute that much when there are people who are dying. I mean, we're, this, these are harsh economic times. I know the immediate response now would be, it's my money, I can do what I want. It's my money, I can do what I want. Yes, but ethically speaking, it still helps to use that money to better someone's life. But Risky was already doing fine, even before he... I mean, he's even saying now that he would spray in dollars, not Naira. So I think in as much as it's your money... It is still nice. It looks good on you if you spend it on someone that actually needs the money. But okay, I, I okay, would not say that's what that's I a very good angle. But from the aspect where they are saying he's pro they are promoting what he's doing, I don't, I don't think I don't think okay. it, it transcends. I mean, obviously, as a journalist, journalism will make you think of from this book being here. I can look at so many angles. I can make a story out yeah. of this book being mm -hmm. here, right? So it is definite that people are going to look at the broad picture of it. But I think when sending that money. They were just probably doing it as a friendly gesture. Mm, friendly but gesture. it is our job to, of course, look at other angles of mm. it and, you know, why they could have done that. But I think it was the simple reason of trying to, trying to support someone that, who was in need and facing a lot of judgments at that point more than usual. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we've run out of time. We, we have run out of comments. time. Um, okay. Thank you, Divine. Thank I you truly too. enjoyed it. And I hope that you guys did as well. Um, I didn't say, talk about your dress. I really do like your earrings and oh, your dress. It goes so well. You. Thank you.